In this lesson, we will be looking at metallic solids and their properties in more detail. So metallic solids are made up of only one type of metal atom. The valence electrons are delocalized and they are free to move throughout the solid. So the particles within a metallic solid are atoms that are arranged in a regular pattern and they are held together by the electrostatic attraction between the delocalized electrons that are around each nuclei and the positive charge of the protons within the nuclei. We call this attraction between the delocalized electrons and the protons in the nuclei of neighboring atoms, the metallic bond. Metallic bonds are what's called non-directional. And this means the attraction between the nuclei and the surrounding delocalized electrons is not in any particular direction. So the delocalized electrons are attracted to all of the surrounding atoms around them. So if we look at these electrons here, they would be attracted to this nuclei, this nuclei, this nuclei, this nuclei, and so on. So when we look at the poorly drawn arrows, we can see that they're not in any particular direction. So this attraction is going this way, this one is going this way, this one is going this way, and so on. That electrostatic attraction, that metallic bond, is going in lots of different directions. The metallic bond is usually strong, and this means it requires a high amount of energy to overcome the electrostatic attraction between the atom's nuclei and delocalized electrons. Therefore, most metallic solids have a high melting and boiling point. These can range from the high hundreds to the thousands. Metallic solids do have a range of boiling points though, because the strength of the metallic bond varies depending on how many delocalized electrons the atoms have and how many protons they have. The more protons and the more delocalized electrons, the stronger the attraction between those two. And therefore, the stronger the metallic bond and the more energy and higher temperature is required to break that bond during melting and boiling. Mercury is an exception as it is a liquid at room temperature. Your other metallic substances are solid at room temperature. The hardness of metals also ranges from soft to hard due to the varying strength of the metallic bond. Many metals are hard as the metallic bonds are strong and require a large physical force to overcome them. Whereas the group one metals are soft and can be cut easily with a butter knife. Metallic solids are malleable and ductile because the metallic bond is non-directional. So when the shape of the metallic solid is changed, the regular arrangement of atoms can change too. The atoms are able to slide over each other without disrupting the metallic bond. The delocalized electrons are free to move between the atoms as they change their position in the regular arrangement, stopping the atoms from repelling each other and breaking the solid. If we hit the solid with a hammer, the positive nuclei are free to move without disrupting the metallic bond. And that's because as they move, the delocalized electrons move with it and they change their position so that they still continue to surround the nuclei and the attraction between the nuclei and the delocalized electrons remains in place. So here we have changed the shape of the metal without it breaking and therefore metallic solids are malleable. Metallic solids are also ductile. This means that we can draw them out into a wire without breaking the solid. So in this example here, we can move the atoms, the position of the atoms, to turn them into 
one long wire. And as we do this, the delocalized electrons move at the same time, so they are still surrounding the metallic solid. Therefore, the metallic bond, the attraction between the nuclei and the surrounding delocalized electrons remains in place. And the fact that these electrons can move as the atoms do to surround those atoms allows the metallic solid to be ductile. Metallic solids are not soluble in polar or nonpolar solvents. And this is because the metallic bond is strong and it takes a lot of energy to break the electrostatic attraction between the metal atoms. The metal atoms are more attracted to their delocalized electrons than they are to the molecules in the solvent. And because the attraction between the metal atoms and the molecules in the solvent is weaker, the solvent is not able to pull the metal atoms out of their lattice, and so therefore the metallic solids do not dissolve. However, some metals will react with water. So here we've got an image of sodium reacting with water to form sodium hydroxide, and it's quite an explosive reaction because it happens so quickly. Whilst the metal disappears, it is not dissolved. So after sodium and water have reacted, you can no longer see the sodium, but you could not get the sodium back by evaporating the water. The particles haven't dissolved to become surrounded by water. They've turned into a new substance, metal hydroxide. So we can't get that back. And so therefore, whilst they will react with water, they do not dissolve in it. Metallic solids do conduct electricity. So we have a whole lot of delocalized electrons in the solid state. So when they're applied to an electric field, so a positive end and a negative end, the electrons are all free to move. So they can all move in the same direction towards that positive charge. And therefore they're able to carry an electrical charge and so they can conduct electricity. Metallic solids can conduct in the solid state as those delocalized electrons are free to move. 